Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 8th grade concept of transformations, specifically which transformations keep congruence and which ones don't, and we will do it in 5 minutes or less. So when we're talking transformations, there's four major ones we're looking at, rotation, reflection, translation, and dilation. So let's look at an example of each and see whether that translated shape is still congruent or not. So a rotation uh, is pretty simple. You just have to do a little bit of trickery. So let's say we want to move something uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. What we do is we start inverting some of these uh, xy coordinates. Maybe we make them negative. So 90 degrees counterclockwise, what that means is we're going to take our x and y coordinates and we're going to translate them. We actually flip. So our y becomes our new x coordinate. We make it negative, And then our x becomes our new y coordinate. So that's how we would do it counterclockwise. So here's an example. So let's say we just have an arrow. And I'm going to have that arrow right here kind of pointing at the origin because we always rotate around the origin. So if we want to go 90 degrees counterclockwise, it's going to come over here. If we kind of plug these in here. And what we're going to end up with is we are going to end up with another arrow. And it's going to still be pointed at the origin. Uh, but as you can see, it's kind of shifted over. It's rotated over towards the left counterclockwise. But I'm keeping the exact same proportions, the exact same side lengths, the exact same area. So it is still going to be congruent. So rotation keeps congruence. We're good to go. Reflection. So reflection, uh, typically we reflect across either the y-axis or the x-axis. So let's say I want to reflect across the y-axis. So what we do is we keep the xy coordinates. We don't flip them like we do with the rotation. All we do is if we're going to rotate across the x-axis, we actually just invert our y-coordinates. We make it negative y. So here's an example. All right, so let's just say uh, I've got a triangle. And I'm going to put this over here. And let's just say it's kind of pointing down right here. Right, so I've got a triangle over there in quadrant 2. We're wanting to get it to flip or to reflect across this x-axis right here. Think of it like a mirror. So it's going to, it's going to flip straight down. So it's going to end up looking like this. It's going to look like it's staring at itself in the mirror. But side lengths, angle measures, area, all stays exactly the same. So rotation keeps a shape congruent. So does a reflection. Let's check translation. So translation is when you take like an, an, your xy coordinate and you just, you just move it. Um, and so you're just going to maybe add, let's say we're going to add 3 to the x, we're going to take away 2 from the y. So we're just going to kind of shift it, right? So if I'm going to start with something down here in, uh, let's see, in my quadrant uh, 2 again, and let's just start with that same triangle. So if I'm going to say x plus 3, that means I'm going to shift it over here a little bit. If I'm going to say y minus 2, I'm going to shift it down a little bit. So it's going to end up looking something like this, right? So I kept it as the same orientation. All I did was slid it over 3 and down 2. So it stays congruent. Angle measure, area, side lengths, all stays the same. Dilation, though, that's when you start using scale factors. So let's say we do this, right? So x, y gets translated to Oh, let's say 1 half x and 1 half y. So we're keeping it similar, but as you can tell, we're going to shift how big it is. So let's take this same triangle. And if I take half x and half y, what's going to end up happening is it's going to end up being smaller. It's going to end up being shifted over a little bit. And so it is not congruent because... I made it smaller, or you can make it bigger based on the scale factor. 